Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to expand a little bit our understanding of how to write constructors for our classes. We're going to talk about the purpose of a constructor, we'll review some of our previous understanding about constructors, and especially the newest concept that we want to focus on in this lesson is how to design classes that have multiple constructors in them so that you can initialize your objects differently in different situations. So just to review a little bit, um, we know that a constructor is a special method that's designed to set up the values for all of the class variables when you construct a new object. And that a constructor gets called automatically when you use the keyword new. That's what that, uh, that's what that keyword triggers. And its purpose is to assign a value to every class variable depending on the way that you write it you can either just assign those variables predefined values that are written into the constructor or you can add parameters to the constructor and use those parameter variables as the values that you assign to your class variables so the syntax of a constructor looks like this um, couple things that you need to know about constructors. They always have exactly the same name as the name of the class. That's how Java identifies them. And probably most significantly is that there's no return type uh, after the word public. You might be used to seeing things like public string or public int or public student, but for a constructor it's just public and that's one of the things that makes constructors different from all other kinds of methods. As far as what you should put inside of a constructor, it's really just a method. It's just like any other kind of method. Um, it assigns a value to each variable uh, that is part of the class and if you need to you can call other methods um, from inside your constructor. The one thing that you really want to try to be careful of though is that you don't put anything in your constructor that interacts with the user. No print statements, no input statements, it just needs to set up the class variables. And the reason for that is that there are a lot of times when you need to create objects and you don't want to interact with the user. And so you don't want to force people who use your class to write programs that do interact with the user. If people want to have the users set up the class objects, they can do all that input stuff, but it's got to be done before you call the constructor. Okay, so before we get to writing multiple constructors, let's review from the other lesson that we did for this particular um, day in the calendar. We have this class student that we wrote in the adding data to classes lesson, and uh, in that uh, student class we wrote a constructor. This is an example of what you would call the default constructor which simply means the constructor that doesn't take any parameters and in that case you essentially have to make up whatever values you think would be most appropriate to an object that uh, is created without any special uh, predefined values. These values here are kind of uh, a little too specific usually in the default constructor you want to give it values that are very obvious to someone who creates an object using it that uh, no parameters were used. So I'm going to reset all of those to slightly more sensible values. Also you note that um, I didn't write any comments for this method. It's not really important. Everybody can tell by looking at it that's the constructor and there's nothing really special about it so I'm just going to skip writing comments for that method. Now as far as writing multiple constructors is concerned, you can have different constructors with different sets of parameters. Because maybe sometimes you create a student and you want to specify their name but not their grade. Or you want to specify their name and their grade but you don't know what their average is yet. Or maybe they have an average but not a name. That seems unlikely but you never know. Anyway, having multiple constructors gives more flexibility to the people who want to create objects using your class and all you have to do is to write each one separately inside of your class definition. There's one important ground rule though that you need to understand. Each constructor has to have a different set of parameters and that means a different set of types of parameters not names of parameters. 
So if we have a public person constructor that takes string name, then we can't have any other constructors that only take one string, even if that string is for a different class variable. So we could have one that takes one string, one that takes one int, and one that takes one string and one int. But we can't have two constructors that each take one string. Each combination of variables has to be unique. Let's take a look back in our student class of what it might look like to have multiple constructors. So let's just assume that we're going to write a constructor that lets people set up the name. Uh, and so in this case, I'm going to write a comment, an at param comment for name. And we're going to say that's equal to the name of the student. Again, I don't need to summarize the method. It's a constructor. We know what that is. But now, when I create my constructor, I'm going to put that parameter inside the parentheses. And this time, and we're going to go back up here and copy and paste this just to make it a little bit quicker. But this time, the difference is, instead of assigning the empty string to my name, we're going to assign the parameter to my name. And that's typically what you'll do. Most of the time, you should just take each parameter and assign it directly to the class variable that it applies to. OK, we're going to compile that. And then we're going to go down to our main method and see an example of what it might be like to use both of those constructors. So in this case, I'll make a new student object. And this time, I'll put a string in the parentheses. And that tells Java that I want to use my second constructor, the one that has the string parameter. So now if I go to print both of my students, let's see what happens. OK. So we can see that the Roger object came out with the default parameters, which are empty. And the Marcy object came out with the name Marcy, because we ended up using the constructor that took a string. And if we wanted to add other constructors to specify the other parameters, we could do that too. Okay, so in this lesson, you've learned how to, um, you've reviewed your understanding of constructors, and you've learned how to create classes that have multiple constructors in them. The important thing to remember is that each constructor has to have a unique combination of types of variables. Uh, as long as you do that, as long as you make sure that when you create an object, you put the right things in the parentheses, uh, you'll be all set. Okay.